Yeah, Mick, I'm just wondering, you know, you, it seemed like you guys had, had pulled a little bit of the, the Miami, uh, what Miami had done against Baltimore out, uh, at least it's a lot in the first half when you went to dime. Um, did you guys get away from that or shift away from that more in the second half uh, to, to maybe help stop the run game? Or what was the uh, impetus there at the halftime change? Um, no, I don't think we changed too much. Uh, maybe in the, in the fourth quarter we did. Uh, but the third quarter we were still running uh, build the blitzes. Uh, Miami, like the calls. Um, but more towards maybe not even the fourth quarter, just that last series, we changed it up a little bit just to switch it up. Um, you know, when they're running cover zero in the last 40 minutes, 40 seconds of the game, you know what I'm saying? It's not a real easy position to put your DBs in, um, especially when you've been running it the whole game. So we, we switched it up a little bit toward the back. Nick Fairbaugh, Pittsburgh Sports Now. I think uh, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to say you have Lamar figured out, but you guys have put pressure on him multiple times before when you face him. What about your guys' defense, your game plans against Lamar? That has, what is it that has given him so much trouble when you face him and the marriage between the coverage you guys have and then the defensive line obviously getting pressure as well? Um, one, I don't think anybody will ever be able to figure Lamar Jackson out. Uh, the type of player that he is uh, – and the problems that he causes for, for teams, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing that you could just figure out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think we play well again. We could play twice a year. Um, we have kind of a, a beat for, you know, how he plays and what he likes to do. Um, this is everybody doing their job up front, you know, keeping him in the pocket, in the back end, not letting any balls go, going over our hand and anything that's, you know, thrown in front of us, coming up and attacking us. So it's just a, uh, a uh, team effort. Uh, in regards to, you know, limiting their big playability. Chris Adamski, Trib. Minka, uh, you seemed, you know, you don't usually show this much of upset about that DPI call. Um, did, and then you, even Coach Tomlin went out and talked to the officials, even the referee got involved. I don't think he threw the flag, the actual referee. Um, what Did they give you an explanation? Do, do, do you, in retrospect, do you still have issue with it or anything? The, um, the, the the official that, that threw the flag, he said that I didn't play the ball. Um, I, I turned my head around, you know what I'm saying? If the ball was a good pass, I would have been easily able to play the ball. Um, I wasn't grabbing him. I wasn't pulling him. He he leaned into me, of course, you know, to try and draw the penalty. Um, but I wasn't holding him back from getting to the ball or anything like that. Um, but, you know, he, he threw the flag. It wasn't really much for it. Um, you know, for me to do after that, but it wasn't my my favorite call. Not especially not in a game in a series like that. Is that just life as a DB where the the offense has an advantage and you, you can't do it? Uh, or, yeah. Yeah. Brian Backup post Gazette. Hey Mako, we were just talking to uh Akella Witherspoon on here a few minutes ago. Um you know he played more snaps yesterday than he had all season to this point with you guys. I mean what um what allowed him to do that? What did you see from him throughout the week that gave you an idea that, that he was going to be able to step up in, in that spot? Um, more about what he's done since, he, since he's got here. Um, I think since he's got here, he, he's played really well. Uh, he learned our system extremely fast. And um, even though he wasn't getting the, the reps on the field uh, or, or uh, during the game, he was uh, definitely in practice you know, every time he was out there whether it was with the ones or twos or even the threes sometimes, he was competing, you know what I'm saying? He was making plays on the ball. He was in the right position. Um, and I think, you know, when he, you know, the last couple of weeks since he's been playing a lot more, um, it was no surprise anybody that, you know, he's going to play at a, at a good level, at a high level. Um, so, you know, we've got to keep that rolling. Uh, Spoon is a great player. Uh, we're happy to have him here. He's a great addition to the secondary. So, um, you know, he's going to, find ways to get on the field. Jim Colony, 93-7. <laughs> yeah, Mick, you're, you're one of those guys that, that, that puts in a lot of extra work. You've seen Deontay Johnson uh, put in a ton of extra work as well. How instrumental was that, do you think, in him being able to bounce back yesterday after missing the one touchdown pass and then coming back to catch two of them? Yeah, I think, um, you know, Deontay, he, he does a lot of a lot of extra work. You know, he actually um, – inspired me to, to do extra work after practice. He always is catching about probably a hundred extra passes and then he catches with the tennis balls and 
Uh, I started doing the same thing. Um, you know, I was struggling catching earlier this year. Um, I feel like he's helped me uh, tremendously too. So uh, he's definitely challenged me to, you know, take that extra step for sure. Um, but, you know, it was, it, was, it was impressive the way that he bounced back, not just physically, but mentally. You know, dropping a, a touchdown like that is, is definitely tough. But um, I think he's really grown and matured. And, uh, you know, you obviously seen that last night after we came back and put up over 100 uh, receiving yards against a, a great uh, secondary, uh, tough guys to, to play against. And, um, you know, I think uh, this is a testament to his uh, physical or mental maturity. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Yeah, Minka, how much did the defense need a convincing one like this, especially after the way the last two games have gone? Just how important is this for your momentum going forward, and how do you keep from the, a turnaround on a short week being a letdown after an emotional win like the one uh, against the Ravens? Um, when we uh, put this, you know, the win yesterday behind us, uh, it was a great win. It was a much-needed win. Uh, but, you know, this Thursday is, is you know, 10 times more important because it's the, the next game. Um, you know, in regards to uh, what we needed, uh, I think it was definitely a game that we needed. It was, you know, a rivalry game, division game, uh, you know, and honestly, throughout uh, you know, our last five five games, uh, they're almost like playoff games for us. Uh, it's really important. It's really, uh, you know, uh, we need to win these games. Will Graves, Associated Press. Mika, I'm wondering, um, is TJ underpaid <laughs> based on his <laughs> based on his performance? And you just mentioned it, but seriously, you mentioned just being inspired by what Deontay's done. What is T? I I mean, this guy didn't even practice all weekend. He's out there wrecking games on Sunday. I mean, what do you just sort of marvel at kind of what he does these days? Yeah, that's this what he does, man. He, he's, he's a game wreck. He's a guy that's going to go out there and uh, just, just cause habit. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I think just – the way the energy that he plays with, the passion that he plays with, the, uh, the uh, I don't want to call it anger, but when he's out there, he's angry. You know what I'm saying? And that just inspires everybody out there to, to, to play at that same level. Um, you know, whether we're up, whether we're down, TJ is going to be consistent in the way that he's moving out there on the field. So it's definitely, uh, <laughs> I was, yeah, definitely underpaid for sure. But uh, <laughs> definitely uh, deserves a DPOY. Award, you know what I'm saying he's been robbed the last you know, two years, so hopefully um, he could he could get that this year. Dale Lally, DK. Yeah, Mick, I'm sure you you faced uh, Justin Jefferson when you were at Alabama. Did you have any idea uh, back then that he would be the impact player that he has been at the NFL level? I don't. Uh, if I played him, I think he was he was a freshman. He would have been young, um, so. I, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure uh, if I can answer the question. What have, what have you seen of him, though, at the NFL level? Um, <laughs> excuse me. He's a, um, obviously a very talented receiver. Uh, he's a great route runner. He's a, a guy that wins a lot of his one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, you know, Kirk Cousins likes getting the ball to him a lot. Um, you know, he's explosive once he gets the ball in his hands. He can make you miss. He's not an easy tackle in the open field. Um, you know, he's, he's a guy that, you know, you got to always know where he is because you could either take the top off, off of your defense or you could get a screen and, you know, go 60, 70 yards uh, for a touchdown. So he's a great player. Uh, he's, you know, like we said about TJ, he could be a game worker as well. Um, so you always got to know where he is. Mark Cavalli, the athletic. Hey, Minka, I mean, typically when you have a short week, it's um, either an AFC team or a division game. Obviously, you face the Vikings once every four years, not too familiar with them. Is the bigger challenge physically going, you know, the short week or trying to learn some of their tendencies? No, I think um, I, don't think, I don't think there's going to be too much of a struggle mentally. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we have a great game plan uh, moving forward. Um I think you know the coaches and the players understand that it's a short week and that we need to get on their stuff early. So, you know, rather than taking you know, Monday off from, from film, um, you know, we're all going to be watching and uh, dialed in. All right, last two, Nick Farabaugh, Pittsburgh Sports Now. 
Hey, Mika, TJ said you were coming up to him yesterday saying just keep him in the pocket. We've got things on the back end. You guys call you out all the time as, as a vocal leader. How big are you as a leader in that locker room, on the field, communicating things, as that free safety on the back end? How wide-reaching and, and how important do you view your vocal role as a leader on this team? Um, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a guy that just talks uh, or speaks when necessary. Uh, you know, I'm not a guy that's hooting and hollering and getting you know people rowdy. Um, I just feel like I, I speak when necessary when I see uh, fit. Um, you know, last night was one of those times where I seen uh, an opportunity to let everybody know. You know, make them comfortable with. Um, you know, we got this on the back. You know, don't try and rush anything. Don't try. And, you know, force a sack or force this or force that. Just keep them in the pocket. We'll, we'll cover in the back end, and then you guys will be able to get to the sacks. And, you know, that's exactly what happened last night. Uh, nobody was trying to do anything spectacular up front. We covered in the back end, and then they eventually got to him. So, um, you know, I think, like I said, I'm a guy that um, I'm not, I'm not going to be hooting and hollering, but I'm going to speak when necessary. And the last one, Brian, back to Post Gazette. I think uh, obviously it was huge that TJ came off the COVID list, you know, the day before the game. As someone who's been on both sides of it, how does that work for you guys finding out? And do you get the news the same way we all do when a guy's activated? Does you know, does a guy just show up at, at the building and everyone cheers? Like how do how do you what how's that process go from a player's point of view where it's like, are we gonna have him or are we not? Yeah, um yeah, I mean uh, uh, we find out uh like the player that's, that has it or, or, or the players? Like, yeah, I mean, like either way, someone like TJ is in that Willie or won't he play situation. Yeah. Uh, how does that get relayed to all you guys? So, I mean, as soon as the, um, the uh, athletic trainers find out, you know, they'll tell us and kind of give us an idea of what's going on so that we could, you know, see who's, who's going to be available or not. Um, so as soon as they know, they usually tell them. John, uh, because I've heard it a couple of different ways. If I could first ask, could you pronounce your name for us? It's John with Wu, just like right. like Elmer's glue, just love glue. <laughs> <laughs> and then my second question was, what was it like to be out there, the energy to have this opportunity? Can you describe uh, yesterday for us? I mean, first and foremost, I just want to thank uh, the Lord and Savior above, my family, uh, the coaches, and everybody on the team. I mean, it's a great opportunity to go out there. Um, I. I mean, it's, it's a lifelong dream. I mean, you always, as a kid, you always dream of playing in the NFL, and uh, finally being able to get that experience has been a, an unbelievable feeling, and it was, it was an awesome team win. All right, Mark. Hey, John. I know uh, a lot of times people say, you know, you're a backup. You have to be ready to go at moments' notice. However, when that happens, um, how do you prepare for that, knowing that you haven't had a ton of you know, you didn't have any reps in the in the league so far. How do you prepare for that leading in when there's a good chance you might not play? I mean, it's just one of those things you prepare every week like you're going to be playing. Uh, I mean, Coach Clem and all, all the O-line coaches uh, emphasize that. Coach Tomlin always tells us, uh, make, make sure you take take uh, the opportunity. Um, and and one, one of the, the biggest things is, too, uh, every day in practice, you, we all practice with a, with a purpose and, and in order to be able to maximize our opportunity when we do get it. So uh, I would definitely say Coach Tomlin puts us in the right position to uh, be successful on, on the field. Chris Adamski. Hey, Chris. John, nice to meet you, such as it is. Um, I actually don't see my face right now. Um, <laughs> Uh, obviously, you know, your job is to be ready to prepare to go in. I mean, you've never been in a regular season game in the NFL. Um, what are kind of your emotions or your, your thoughts? Or does it just happen so fast to, like, get in there, somebody's hurt? Or, or I think you've had time over the possession change. But but what do you think in those moments before you go in there that you got to hold up that standard? I mean, it was, it was just one of those things. I mean, like, like I said earlier, we just we, – the way we prepare as a whole offensive line and a whole team, uh, everybody's uh, ready for the moment whenever that their number gets called and uh, – I'm very thankful that uh, well, across the board, I mean, uh, we, we did a great job, and I'm very, very thankful for the outcome. Brooke? Hey, John, I know you were signed to the 53 right before the Bengals game. 
what was that moment like? Recording in progress. What was that moment like? And I mean, was your family able to get there in time? Were they able to get to this game? I mean, just how crazy you have the last two weeks been even before you ended up playing as much as you did last night? Um, well, when I signed the fifth of three, I definitely I teared up. And like once I found out, I mean, it was, it was a dream come true right there. You know, I mean, a lot of hard work has been going into this. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> my parents were able to come into the Cincinnati game. They weren't able to make it this past game, but uh, I'm very thankful for them to be able to uh, come come to these different different events and be there for, with me through through it all. If I could follow up, you said your parents weren't able to be there. What was it like talking with them afterward, after you played, you guys win last night? I mean, who did you FaceTime first? Kind of what was all that like? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I spoke to my parents right after the game, and I mean, they were, they were thrilled. Um, I mean, they, they, they told me that they had believed in me all, all along, and uh, just just to be able to go out there and, and, and show them. And uh, for everybody back home, you know, it's, it's one of those things coming from a small town. I'm, I'm happy to be able to live out the dream and show everybody that it, uh, and with through a lot of hard work, I mean, you, you can get to the places you want to go. All right, Noah. Hey, John, along those lines, uh, your first NFL game is the Baltimore Ravens versus the Pittsburgh Steelers in what turned out to be a, a pretty crazy game. What was that whole thing like? I mean, uh, being early on in the week, uh, emphasized the importance of the rivalry. So did Coach Tomlin. And um, it was just one of those things that you, you definitely want to be a part of that rivalry. And, um, it's just, it's just one of those things. I mean, it was, a, it was a great experience, great team win, and uh, I, I don't think we could have had a better game, and uh, especially like with the outcome we had. All right. <laughs> Jeff? John, I was reading, I think you started as a long snapper in college, and you played pretty much everywhere along the line. What what has been key to your versatility? Um, the co coaches all along, especially in college, they emphasize, John, like in order to, to play in the NFL, you need to be able to play all five positions, and uh, – so anytime I get the playbook, I, I try to make sure I know it through front and back. Um, and it's one of those things, Coach Clem and and Simo. I mean, they, they emphasize the same thing. They told me just keep working, keep keep grind, grinding at it. And uh, then whenever you go out and play, uh, knowing understanding the playbook and how the sch schematics works, you know what kind of defense they can throw at you. And I mean, it's, it's super important and it's super nice knowing what the defense is going to give you before uh, you get out there. All right, Mark. John, with uh, such a short turnaround and with Dotson hurt and Finney and JC all hurt, I would assume you're going to get a chance here on Thursday. How does it change knowing that you will go into the game as the starter and, and the expectations are now there for you to perform like you did last night? Uh, I'm just going to be prepared in, in whatever way that the coaches decide on what they want to do this week. Uh, we hadn't really spoke on anything, but um, yeah, I mean, each week, even when I was on practice squad, I was preparing like I'd be up that week. Because you, you never know in this game. And uh, I'm just going to continue with the same approach I've been having this whole year. Ray? Hey, John, can you just walk us through what was your primary position in college on the offensive line? And then which positions did you add, you know, once you got to the pros the last couple of years? Uh, I mean, I I think I have 16 starts at tackle, uh, 13 at guard, and nine at center. So, I mean, I mean, I, I, I played all across the board. Uh, Week three of my sophomore year, I was playing right tackle, and then our center broke his ankle. I moved to center in the next play. Uh, it's just one of those things. I, I grew up playing center in high school, um, and then go I played guard my my senior year, uh, and, and then it, it's just been one of those things. I'm super thankful to have been able to play all those positions and just add to my versatility. Um, and whatever the team needs me to do, I, I look forward to doing that. If I could follow up, do you think that's why that you're in the league right now? Just because you have those skill sets that. Um, every position that you have to play, that's so important, you know, given the 46, uh, you know, game day roster. Uh, I mean, it's whatever, whatever coaches need me, you know, I, I try to do everything that, that they ask me to do. And uh, it's just one of those things that if you just continue to work hard, I feel like good things will happen. All right, Brooke. You know, what was working for you specifically? I mean, and in the O line as a whole on that last drive when you guys needed to get some runs going, and Najee had a couple that were big. Benny Snell had a couple. Just what were you guys able to do to have that effective game winning drive? Uh, I mean, uh, the biggest thing was I just think that we just kept kept going at it. You know, it's one of those things that you just keep chipping away, and uh, I feel like it's a whole the whole offensive line came together, and we were just talking about getting one play at a time. Um, and I and always, always emphasize the same thing. 
Uh, he, he spoke about playing with a lot of heart. And I, I feel like across the board, we, we played with a lot of passion last night. And um, uh, as a whole team, I mean, you can see the defensive side of the wall. Uh, TJ and everybody was was, was rock. And then uh, same thing, special teams. Uh, I, I think it's a great team when we had and uh, he, across the board. We had receivers block and we had, I mean, every, everybody was doing that at their uh, 111th. And then I'm super thankful for that. Yeah, and following up on that, I mean, you guys were doing a lot of no huddle there, especially in the second half. What is that like for you? Was that difficult to kind of catch on to in the flow of the game? Or did you feel like you were prepared and handled that well? Uh, Coach Tom would always emphasize how, how we all need to be prepared in everything we do. And uh, yeah, Coach Canada put us in great position to, uh, to do uh, be able to execute in the way we did. And uh, with, without them, uh, I mean, we, we do everything we can to, to make sure that we everything goes as planned. All right, guys, so this will be the last two. So if your hand isn't already raised, please do not raise it. Um, Chris Adamski. Hey, John, um, understanding some of its, of course, opportunity that arises that nobody can predict. Um, do you feel like, I mean, this is your fourth team, three seasons. Um, you, you finally get it. Are you a better player now? What have you improved? Was it a better situation here? Did you impress, you think, or, or you kind of fit in better with the scheme or the, or the mindset or whatever? What do you think is different now than maybe – you know, when you're rookie or last year with the other teams? Well, I, I mean, the biggest thing is uh, I've always had the mindset just to try to get 1% better every day. So, uh, I, I mean, if you're asking me if I'm better than I was my rookie year, I feel, I feel like I've developed in, in, that, in that regard. But, uh, I mean, as a, as a professional athlete in general, everybody knows you got to keep competing with, with yourself among other people, you know. And one of those things I just try to emphasize, like focus on the small details and little things to uh, ensure that if I when I do get the opportunity just to – uh, do everything I can to know what I'm doing and, and how to do it properly. Kind of feeding off the rivalry. What was that like for the first time, especially in a game that turned out the way that it did? Yeah, it was incredible. Um, not only because it was a close game, but just the amount of contact and the energy that was on the grass on both sides of the ball, uh, high caliber players on both sides of the ball. So just being a part of that and being able to contribute and um, bring my own little piece of energy to that process was, was incredible. And uh, I have fun doing it with my teammates and uh, just watching them have that same passion, same energy, just feed off of it and it spreads like wildfire. All right, Jim Colony. Jim. Oh, there we go, okay. I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was muted, Dale, Dale was yelling at me from behind me. Um, you got a ton of snaps yesterday. Did, did you know that going in that, that you're going to be playing all that much? And, and if so, or, or maybe either way, when you when you know you're going to play an awful lot, does that help you relax a little bit where you can be more confident with your play? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I knew I was going to start um, throughout the week. Um, I would say that just starting and having all those reps, it just kind of Fall, it kind of puts me back into my zone of being out there every single snap. Um, coming in on other downs hasn't been as as routine for me um, because it's not something I did for four years uh, with the Niners. I was actually out there playing every snap and just understanding the reps, learning from certain plays and stuff like that. So it just kind of puts me back in my comfort zone. I wouldn't say it affected my confidence, but just – understanding that if I make a mistake, it's time to take note of it and correct it and just kind of have that game flow. And that's always something you love as a corner, especially in this league with how challenging it is. Brian Batko. Yeah, kind of along those lines, you know, after the Steelers traded for you and, you know, you weren't playing much early in the year, did, did you get anxious at all about what your role was going to be, how the rest of the season was going to play out? Or did they tell you from the kind of from the beginning that this is going to be a longer process and that patience was was going to be important yeah um i didn't really get caught up in what i wanted the process to look like um i, I knew that being traded um set me up in a position to reestablish my identity and um learn a new defense and find my way to make my plays in that defense and so for myself i didn't mind having a little bit of time to kind of put all that together and make that mesh naturally um, in the beginning, it just with the new defense, I wasn't as comfortable, wasn't as fast. And I know that to make plays in this league at a high level, at a consistent level, you have to have the details of the defense down first, and then the rest will follow. So anxious at times, yes, and wanting to help compete and wanting to help win football games, yes. But 
um, just being God fearing and understanding his plan for me and his timing. I was able to sit back and lean on that and just progress as a player uh, mentally, learning my teammates, connecting with them uh, on a friendship level and then taking that connection out onto the field. So the timing has been incredible. Zach, did you have a follow-up? Oh, yeah. you're still on mute. My bad. All right. So yeah, with that with that being said, and uh, you know, with you saying that your comfort zone is has long been that more full-time role, uh, what do you think it looks like now when when Joe Hayden comes back? And you know, how much of a challenge will it be for you to uh, maybe kind of marry those two uh, those two assignments? Yeah. Once again, just um, understanding the timing of everything. Um, when Joe is back. Whatever that does to my role, I, I have no problem adjusting to that and um, continuing to have that same mindset. Uh, it, it's worked for me thus far in my career, and I'll continue to go with that approach. Um, and obviously, we're eager to get him back. He's an important player on this team. And uh, once again, I'll just adjust uh, as needed. All right, Jim Colony. Yeah, Akella, what a lot of people might think, okay, you play corner, you go out and cover somebody. Um, but but what are some of the differences, I guess without giving away big secrets here, but but what are some of the differences about what you have to do as a cornerback here as opposed to what maybe you had done elsewhere? Um, I think it's just reading coverages more and playing off of your teammates and adjusting to what routes you're getting and stuff like that. Um, Whereas if in my past life, I was more of a man press system where you just cover one guy and that's your that's your job. So just kind of opening up that that world and in terms of football and getting a little more diverse in how you see the game and play the game. And, and this defense has a lot of different coverages. So it's going to be something different down in, down out. Any other questions? All right. Uh, Adamski. Hi, Akello. I, I stepped in a little bit late, so I definitely apologize if you got asked this already because it's 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 a couple months ago now, and it's it's not 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 the best memory. But the the, the Henry Ruggs play, um, you know, from afar, we don't know who's the you know who's was the blame or whatever for that. But either way, you're on the field for that, and you didn't play much after that. How did you kind of mentally? I mean, was that hard on you? You make an impression on your first team, one of your first plays, is that? And, and how were you able to move on from that? And then obviously you know, re redeem yourself this week? Yeah, I think just taking the coaching from it and understanding uh, how you can improve and get better from a, a moment like that. And that's all I did on that one was just understood uh, how I could improve, how we could improve as a unit to stop that type of play. And um, mentally, I think it's just, that's the life of a corner is being able to detach from moments like that and not get emotionally involved. And that's what I did, and, and that's what I have always not excuse me, not haven't always done, but that's what I've learned through my trials and tribulations in this league. So I had to step back and, and go on to the next play, the next opportunity, whether that be a week from now or, or four weeks from now. And that comes with preparation every day in practice and just committing to your craft. Adansky, did you have a follow-up? I think you're on mute. Oh, you're just in terms, I'm sorry, but that, and, and just, you know, you, you kept your, your mindset in terms of, you know, you were, you were getting inactive there for a few weeks and everything. Were you, were you able to, to were, were you, were the coaches telling you, Hey, we're still going to need you here at some point, or did you have that mindset that you were going to be able to, have, you know, show your skills and have a role here at some point? Absolutely. Um, I think anytime you're on a 53 man roster practice squad in an NFL setting in a calendar year, you're going to have an opportunity. Uh, whatever that looks like, I know they believe in me and I uh, believe in myself and they see that on a daily basis once again. And that's the that's the goal is to show who you are day in, day out, regardless of the hardships and the challenges. And um, I'm just thankful for the opportunity and uh, ready for whatever the next one is. All right, guys. So this is going to be the last question. Um, Brian Batko. As someone who's uh, new to the Steelers this year and has played for a few different head coaches now, is there something unique about the way Mike Tomlin gets uh, guys ready for these next man up opportunities like this week, whether it was you, Mon Adams, John LeGlue on the offensive line? Like, is there something specific he does, not even in, in that week necessarily, but just over the course of the whole process or the journey when you're on this roster with him? Yeah, I think he does just by uh, letting everybody know that everybody's role is is relevant. 
uh, going into a certain week, and that stays the same. So two weeks ago when I was inactive, my relevance was was challenging guys on the scout team and making our offense better. And and not only do you suit the narrative of the entire team, but having that approach is only beneficial for you when the opportunity comes. And you have a bunch of men that have that same approach and uh, with a coach that makes it easy to play for. There's no BS. There's no in-between. Um, so it's next man up. He doesn't waste any time on who we don't have. He wants to highlight your individual strengths. And uh, collectively, you take that into a stadium and you have an opportunity to win.